What up, people? Welcome to another episode of the Indian Dots podcast. It is again indie running things solo because I run this shit. Uh, Fuck am I chop liver? Yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, running and, uh, I'm joined by Bao this week. Uh, what up? Regular guest on the podcast, been here before. Yeah. And uh, we went to go see the Eternals yesterday. We did indeed. Uh, I need to tell you something. Okay. I said to mum, when was the last time that you went to go and see a film? And she said, Minions 2, I took her birthday. Said, oh, I saw this, saw, saw this cartoon film. Yeah. And I was like, when? And she said, oh, like, after Baki got married. Yeah. And I was like, if you go you to. Mean, you mean in, in 2012? She said, yeah. I said, mum, I took you to go and see The Lion King. And she's like, no. I said, mum, I went with you. I sat in that same flipping place, Star City. I sat there with you and I said, Mum, we're about to watch Lion King. And she said, I remember taking back to see this when you was a kid. And I said, how could you forget that? <laughs> that kind of hurts me a little bit, Mum. So she fully forgot the last time that she went to go see a film. And I was like, that's quite sad. You've not seen a film in this long in the cinema. So. Yeah, I'm just checking when the minute actually came out. 2015. 2015, that was the last time. 2015, right? There you go. Okay. So I was like, damn, okay. Well, I'm glad we, glad we took her out then. Because we yeah. meant to see the Bond film, but seats were all booked. And there were really shitty ones left, weren't there? Yeah, right at the front of the screen. You're like, I don't think it was Star City. And yeah. If you can't get it at the kiosk, queuing up for the food stand is just a longness. Horrible. But I, I have a weird dynamic when I get there because you know the film's got half an hour of trailers. Yeah. You've got half an hour of time to get through, but then equally like, this queue is so long. <laughs> it, you, you potentially might, might, you might miss the part of the film because it's just that long and they're that yeah. slow at serving. Yeah. So, but, but it's five pounds or six pounds a ticket. It was, yeah. It was. I quite like the film, The Eternals. So we did see the Eternals instead. We saw Eternals instead, yeah. Yeah. Um, I quite liked it, but I know Bowser's a steady, sorry, steady, uh, a stern Marvel fan. Yeah. I'm not, Read comic books ever since he was a kid, has three bookshelves full of comics at home. And growing. And growing. There you go. So I'm sure he's going to tell me all the ins and outs. Go on, tell me why you didn't like it. Okay. It was slow. Okay. Right. I can't deny it was slow. Yeah. See now, what normally happens with films? Oh, by the now, way, there's there's spoilers in this episode. Oh like, yeah, we're, if, we're going we're going full tilt with spoilers. If you haven't seen yeah. it? It's on you, my guy. I'm sorry. If you haven't seen it, um, skip ahead. You'll figure it out. Yeah. Um. So Chloe Chloe Zhao is it the, the 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 director? Yeah. Okay, fine. Not her typical genre. Fine, fair enough. Show me what you can do. It just felt plodding, like so plodding along. I was like, really, just get on with it now. You're trying to build characters up. You haven't given much depth. For the character building they were doing. To be fair, there were like nine main characters. To be fair, how much depth were they actually given to them? To Not be honest. Not much at all. No. Not much at all, right? Only the main, main characters. Okay, so how many main characters were there? Three? Three. Three. Okay, three main characters, okay? Of which you had uh, Gemma Chang, mm -hmm. right? I'm, I'm t the character's name I don't even know. I know some of them, right? But yeah. Because I, what's her the name? Chick called Cersei. 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 Also, I quite like the group mythology references. Yeah. But knowing it's a Marvel film, yeah. they probably weren't done the smartest kind of way. Right. Because these... Cersei is actually from the comics as well. Right. But I know the comics just gave a name for sake of giving a name, but given the depth of going into reason why this name's appropriate. Okay. So I know them, I'm a big mythology fan as well, so I know what Cersei's from. So fine. So it didn't matter too much what the names actually meant or what they were from. Mm. So Cersei was there, fine, as one character. Icarus character, no real depth there, let's be honest. Not really, no. Right. So Rob Stark, no depth. Okay? Yeah. Jon Snow, Dane Whitman. Even though you think just a boyfriend for this one. Dane Whitman, no, isn't it? Uh... Dane something. Dane Whit. No. Dane Wh Fuck, what's his name? It's starting to piss me off. I got a laptop in front of me, but I don't want to look. I don't Kit want to Harrington. Look. Kit Harrington. Kit Harrington. No, no, go. no. I said Dane with the character in the fucking oh, car. Oh, the name of the. Don't so step, why did you say that... Jon Snow before that? Rob Starhawk. Because I'm bringing out the Game of Thrones connection afterwards. Right, okay, you just ruined it for me completely. Yes, but I thank did. you for that. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Asshole. People don't watch. Not everyone's watching Game of Thrones, contrary to popular belief. Okay. Well, that. Well, to be fair. They're assholes, but then season eight, I'm the asshole because yeah, I watched it. And I got caught. it <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ, you let down. Then what was worse, that or the final episode of Lost? I think all of Lost. <laughs> all of Lost as well. Oh, uh, Lost is just one. Because at least Game of Thrones had stories that ended. Lost didn't answer anything. <laughs> Nothing was answered. It was just this one big troll. It, it, yeah, it was purgatory, whatever. But yeah, yeah we're going off topic now. Um, putting it back. So, okay, so you had the main characters. You had, so you had her, Cersei, right? right? Who else, who else was developed as more than a one dimensional character? A one dimensional character. Maybe the black guy, Paperboy. Paperboy? What do you mean? The black guy in the show, right? The black guy in the show? In, the black guy in Eternals. Yeah. The guy with the weapons, the weapons yeah, guy. Yeah. Atos or Toto, whatever his name is. Yeah? I don't know his name. Basically Forge. Um, he's from Atlanta, the TV show. Oh, and the And in show. that, oh, which, which is really good. Okay. Charles Gambino, War. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, and he's called Paperboy. And he's a rapper. 
And he's a proper That's grumpy. That's how you got his name, okay. Yeah, he's a proper grumpy, my wife's, and... Uh, in this one, he wasn't grumpy. No, but it's just cool because I see him and it, it's Paperboy. Yeah. That's typecast in my head, hence why I see Rob Stark, I see Jon yeah, Snow. Yeah, I, I did think the yeah. same, yeah. I see Angela Joan Lee as Angela Joan Lee. Yeah. Right? Who actually was probably the best actress in the whole thing. I thought she was brilliant. She can act really well. Yeah. Fair play to her. She knows what she's doing and she delivers her stuff well. But again, all the characters they had were all very one dimensional. Mm. And they were very much, this is our version of Justice League. You've got the Speedster. You've got the Wonder Woman. Oh, yeah. You've true. got Superman. Yeah. Didn't quite have a Batman. Mm -mm. Right? You were saying earlier you were happy the black guy wasn't killed at the end of it. Yeah, I said I was happy he wasn't killed. And then Bow said, yeah, but he was gay. And I was no, like, it's not, but he was gay. He's like, no, no, no a, they just made him gay. It's an additional, yeah, but they made him gay. And I was like, oh, it's, okay. But, so now we've sort of got up in the world a little bit. We're like not dying. So we're just going to make you the minority stopgap for every, every And we genre made the brown guy the comedy, the comedy relief. Yeah. So they made the brown guy the comedy relief. You had the black guy who was, he gay. didn't die. Great. Yeah. Yeah. But then they made him gay. I was like, okay, cool. Fine. So, so we've got our, got our quota ethically done. Yeah. We had female lead characters. And for once, which is quite rare, Marvel do a better job than DC here. They have a female lead character whose sole protagonism and reason for existing is not just they're female. Yeah. They're actually good characters. So whether they're male or female, it doesn't matter. They're just yeah. good characters and it works. That I can respect an awful lot more. Whereas in DC, it's like, hey, or like sometimes Marvel, you Captain Marvel, who Brie Larson's absolutely annoying as hell and atrocious, mm. atrocious generally speaking. Mm. She annoys me. Wonder Woman, one was fine. Two was like all this- I never watched either of them. Okay, well, one was, one was fine. Mm. Two was like, seriously, dude, really? You really are getting off here? And yeah, I, was, I don't know if you get too woke, you just get too annoying because we have something called Mary Suing it. And Mary Suing it is the worst thing in films now. Mary what? Mary Sue. What does that mean? When they want to put a woman into a- strong role in a film. She's the main character. That's fine. Every character to be likable has to go through a struggle. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. And you go through a sort of path of learning and it's a yeah. challenge, everything else. And you warm up to them. You warm up to them because you go through the trials with them, right? The trouble then is, is women, as I said, they get dunked on in films. So they don't make women go through that much of struggle to get to be good. You had it massively in Star Wars the remakes. We had a Rey. Yeah. Who just magically was Everything. A great Jedi and yeah. great everything. First bit of a lightsaber takes on a guy who's been trained for years. Mm. No problem at all. Batters him up and everything yeah, else. Yeah, but Disney fucked up the Star Wars franchise. But, but the idea was that Mary Sue trope still exists, right? Brie Larson's Captain Marvel gets blasted randomly with a piece of the shard from um, these, the Mind Stone, whatever, Space Stone. Yeah. And she's got all these powers. She's the most powerful woman character ever. Mm. Why? Where's the challenge there? I think it's in flashback. Oh, she had a hard childhood growing up. No, she didn't. Let's be honest. But no one cared. No one saw the struggle or felt it. But she's yeah, instantly the most powerful. That film was also a stopgap between they had the ending of was it en no Infinity War? They had and the it, ending of Infinity War, and they had to be like, oh, we've got to give you some answer. In the meantime, we'll put this film out as a stopgap, and then we need a lot of time to film everything for Endgame. They were lucky. No, Endgame and Infinity War filmed at the same sort of time, I think, if I remember correctly. Well, they weren't filmed back to back. I thought they were. They weren't because otherwise, um, yeah. what's his name? The guy who plays Hulk. Mark Ruffalo. Mark Ruffalo. He, he would have blurted out the ending again. Yeah, he did, <laughs> he, he did say, they all die in the end. Yeah, he oh, did. He God. said that before, but yeah. then obviously he would have blurted out the ending again. But okay. I remember when, when, when they shot Endgame, they shot alternative endings. And yes. They didn't tell anyone what had happened, happened in case they went on TV and fucked it up. Yeah, which, 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 which Spider-Man been... did. No, he didn't. He did in the previous one, not in that one. Oh, I, I think the best one was Mark Ruffalo had started doing a live stream for a film before he went <laughs> on. And he goes, yeah, guys, cool. We're about to go in there for the first screening. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Left his phone on his pocket. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was Thor Ragnarok. Mm. And the first 10 minutes of it, his phone was on so people could hear what was going on in the film. <laughs> it's like somebody told his PA and they ran in and turned his phone off for him. Jesus. But um, yeah, so Mary Suing is the issue. Okay. Yeah. And... These women get powerful for no reason and you don't like them. They've become very unlikable. Mm. And that's really affected Star Wars massively. Yeah. That's why it didn't do so well. The longevity is they completely ruined the franchise. Also, they fired the directors and there's all the other issues behind that. Oh, because yeah. the, woke, the woke stuff, wasn't it? Was, not, it, was, not, it, was it one a Republican? No, 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 it wasn't that. So yeah, Patty Jenkins, I think. It's Patty something. No, that's, that's the director of Wonder Woman. There's a woman in charge of the Disney side who's very, very pro whatever. And her... Politics comes across quite strongly in how right. the film will progress. People really, really get annoyed with her. Mm. So that's one issue. Second issue was the director 
I think it was Reese something or Reese Johnson. I forget my final public look at the name. Second film along, he completely shattered the entire franchise. Like completely shattered everything. He goes laser swords and Luke's all pissed off. Yeah, and, you know, right. we're going to be some amazing sort of thing. And he's basically dunked on the whole franchise saying, oh, it's no big thing. It's such a bad job. Turned everyone off. And they go, hey, man, he's making a new sort of world here. And it was like, no, he's just shat on every bit of goodwill you had. Yeah. J.J. Abrams made the first film. It was great to watch. It was enjoyable. It was a flashback to all the films beforehand everyone enjoyed. This guy comes on and goes, it's laser swords, it's old men, yeah, it's boring. Yeah, I get it. Boom. And then by the third film, they had to sort of wrap it up together again. So Ray gone from being no one, just magically a freak of nature, okay, to suddenly, oh, she's power please granddaughter. Mm. Right? That's why she's so powerful. Everyone's like, why is she so fucking powerful? No, no, one, no one vibes with that at all. Yeah, I mean, it felt like it, all the Star Wars films were just made on the fly like yeah. let's just throw this in let's throw that in let's throw this in and then they went film to film there was no chronology behind what they were doing there was no depth to it it's just like oh that just coincides and matches with that let's just force it in which isn't too dissimilar to the original prequels they were fucking slapdash as anything which one's one two and three one two and three yeah they were terrible right george lucas absolutely ruined it for everyone mm. this is like they, they said he was so hard to work with george lucas was even though he wrote it so hard because they develop characters and they go, Hey, this guy should be friends with that guy. Like, no, this is the guy that's I mean, the main bad guy. Mm. He can't become friends with a Jedi. What the fuck? He's like, No, no, I'm saying it. They're going to change it. They're like, Oh, okay. He's horrifically bad. And they, the best thing about him was the stuff he wasn't involved in. That cartoon version of the um, Star Wars Clone, Clone Wars. Wars was brilliant because yeah. he wasn't fucking involved in it. Mm. Clone right? Wars is really good. Yeah. Re uh, Republic. No. Rogue One. Star Wars film. That was good. Really good. Because it had to fit in to be the prequel to episode four. And it did. And it did. And it, it, it ended fantastically well. Very well, yeah. So, skipping all that, back to Eternals. Slow film. Um, there were some really good parts in it. I quite like how they had the mythology going on to it. I thought some of the CGI in it was very good. Yeah, Marvel got the best CGI, let's face still, it. Still, like, some of it can look quite forced and shit. But yeah. But some of it was... When you fight, when you fight the CGI monsters... It yeah. can go quite badly. They were very, very good. They were decent. Yeah. They're not the most memorable of monsters. They weren't, but the way it worked on screen with obviously, this is me and my inner videographer, like just, just liking how the colors match well on screen and complemented and they set yeah. it in backdrops where the colors would pop well. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's really well done. You could have done that in a really shitty way. Um, yeah, DC way basically. Perfectly. DC would have fucked it. Yeah. Hands down. Like with Aquaman. <laughs> I didn't even bother watching it. I didn't bother it. watching it, it but I heard if you got really high and watched Aquaman, you were having a secondary psych psychedelic experience <laughs> because it tripped you out so much with the colors on screen. Jesus. I was like, wow, okay. They didn't think that through properly at all. Yeah, no. D DC are just, just a touristy bad. By the way, new Batman, I mean, talking about that in a second, it's hilariously bad what happened with that one. What? The new Batman film's coming out. You can talk about it now. I think, I think we've wrapped Eternals. Okay, so Eternals, uh, I, I can see why it's the worst ranked critically Marvel film. Oh, is, is it? It's one of the worst ranked scored Marvel films ever. I mean, I could think of worse. I, I thought... What's worse? There's, there's, there's a few what, other Thor films. Thor 2. Thor 2 probably. Yeah, and there's other ones that aren't very memorable. Like any of the Ant-Man films aren't memorable. Nice They're Black all just Widow. sort of like... Yeah, they aren't. They're just like... Yeah. All yeah. right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's also, decent. Also, I was vexed at the ending with Harry Styles pops on stage. I'm like, fuck Harry Styles and Bag of Dicks. Yeah, I, I didn't get the ending. Yeah, um, he basically... Secondary scene. I, I did my little research afterwards. Thanos is actually an Eternal. Right. Eternals in the MCU are these things made by those big celestial beings. Yeah. They're not. They're actual people from an actual world. Yeah. And Thanos is one of them originally. That's why that guy cropped up and goes, hey, I'm an Eternal and I'm also a brother of Thanos. Mm -hmm. So it may transpire later on. Thanos was actually an Eternal mm -hmm. who went rogue or something possibly. Yeah. That could be what happens. And that's why he didn't have any kids that were his own because Eternals can't reproduce. Got it. Themselves, but they can reproduce with others. Mm. So yeah. But he's a rip off of dark side, but that's, by the by. Um, yeah, Batman. So you've got uh, Emo Boy playing. Wait, hang, on, hang on, but why don't you like Harry Styles at the end? Just as an actor? Just, just as an actor, like, dude, really? Really, dude? Oh, uh, you had him instead of anyone else? Did you, yeah, you had him, okay, playing a sort of role. I don't know how good an actor he is. It's now his job to prove it. Right now, it feels like a shameless sort of cash in plug of, hey, I'm famous. Can I be right, the main right character? Yeah, yeah. It's like, dude, really? It felt like, you know what it really felt like? If you ever watched back in the day, I'm a big wrestling fan back in the day. WCW back in the day yeah. would try and do anything they could to be hot and beat Monday Night Raw. They smashed him for fucking nearly a year and a half, two years mm. on Monday Night Battles or the pitch more Raw versus Nitro. Yeah, yeah. And then they smashed the hell with NWO 
came back, flashed, flashed, flashed ahead. Then Raw came back and became, you know, Raw's War Attitude Era. Yeah. And that came both to the top. They were trying anything to get hot again. At one point, they put the world title belt on David Arquette. Do you know who David Arquette no. is? He's an actor. Right. He was the world champion in a pay-per-view and he became the world champion of WCW in an effort to try and get on. And just like, what the fuck? And just to doing? try and get more viewers, basically. Right. That's what if that's all about. Marvel don't need to do that at all. This film has got bugger off to do any continuity of anything so far. The only thing in my continuity with is the fact that the black guy, the paperboy, I'm, I'm going to call him paperboy. That's yeah. who he used to be. Yeah. Made those ring things that help. That helped all of them combine their powers, yeah. Right. Those rings remind you of Shang-Chi. Yeah, they do. And That's Shang-Chi cool. ended with the rings being brought up with what are these things? Yeah. So there could be some sort of continuity there, possibly. Potentially. I mean, we, we didn't stay to the very, very end because it was long. It was long, man. But also the very end is more like a fuck you sort of thing. It's like a minor little Well, thing. no, it wasn't because the very, very end of Shang-Chi. Oh, no, it was that. <laughs> it was literally a fuck yeah, you. Yeah, it was that. Yeah, yeah, I remember. The worst one ever was that Thor one where the end of it all, he goes, he's, he's in therapy. <laughs> no, the worst of it was Deadpool. You stayed at the end and Deadpool comes out and says, why are you still here? Yeah. Go. Go. <laughs> yeah. Go home. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, motherfucker. Fucker, I went through all. Time. I looked at who the best boy was. What the fuck is a best boy on the trailer clips? Best boy. Who's best boy? Every time you go through the credits at the end of a film, yeah. there's someone who's called the best boy. Oh, is there? <laughs> yeah. That's I how always, bored I've got. I actually read the I credits. I always look for like the ethnic names. I'm like, ooh, Khan. Ooh, Singh. Right. Oh, Patel, Patel, Patel. <laughs> I'm like, oh, cool. Right. Special thanks to whatever country yeah, they filmed it in, yeah, New Zealand or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I quite like Kunal. Yeah. Kunal was cool in it. Yeah. Right. But he had very much gambit like powers. A little like, bit, yeah. With finger his, guns. Like, little pew, gun pew, thing. pew, pew, pew. But I thought that was cool. I thought However, yeah, it was done well. He leaned, they leaned heavily into like the Bollywood side of things with him because he's brown. Well, you know what? To the point, why the fuck not? But he didn't have a lot of character depth to him. No. The cat depth came when he said, I'm not going to fight against Icarus. Yeah. And I respected that so much. Like, I know it's going to be a battle both ways. I'm not going to get involved either way. Yeah. I actually respected that. Like, okay, that's kind of quite cool. I thought that was a bitch move. I ain't gonna no, lie. because he's, he's got principles where I kind of agree with him because he's my guy. But I'm not going to argue with you guys because you're my guys as well. So rather than I'm torn, I'm going to step out. Mm. And basically, the, that, uh, the big celestial god. Yeah. They basically made him to be like Galactus. Yeah. I eat planets. Like that, yeah. We fuck up planets and whatever else. And, you know, then, then the, that makes Eternals, the Heralds of Galactus, basically Silver Surfer, they've gone back on their master and go from there. I did like how Marvel just explained why didn't you get involved in anything that We don't get involved. Yeah. Well, that's a problem with any Marvel film, any Marvel they have comic. have to give answers to what people is, is the most obvious question. Yeah. Which is, where the fuck were they? And you're like, oh, okay. But every Marvel comic has that problem. Yeah. And that's why the problem Marvel comics is a lot of the characters are based in New York. Yeah. And it's like, well, if you fuck around in New York, then it's fine fighting a big issue there. You didn't help. Where's Daredevil? Where's Doctor Strange? Where's, you know, because Doctor Strange is on Bleecker. Yeah. Daredevil's in Hell's Kitchen. Peter Parker's from, you know, Queens. So why are they, where's, where's Luke Cage? Yeah. And it's always a problem for them. So they've got to kind of explain that they were busy doing other things. But, you know, <laughs> so it, it, it's, it's difficult. But that's why you always have summertime crossovers in comics. Yeah. Massive events. Everyone gets everyone's comic because yeah, it. it's going to affect everyone through. Annoying for a fan because you got to buy every comic. Every single comic. I guess it's a good upsell, isn't it? It is. To get more background stuff. Uh, uh, Batman. We're moving on to Batman, yeah. So Emo Boy is going to be ba ba Batman, right? That's Edward. Robert Patterson. Yeah. Edward Cullen. Edward Cullen, that's it. That's how I know him. <laughs> I know him as that. Yeah. Like, you're that kid from fucking Twilight. That's it. Oh, I, oh, no, really? He said Cedric Diggory. Yeah, but prior to that, it was Twilight. I think Cedric Diggory was first, you know. Was it? I'm pretty sure Cedric Diggory comes before Twilight. Google, come on, fingers. I'm trying to. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> well, I'll, I'll buy time and store for you, shall I? Well, no, your Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, uh, Goblet of Fire. When was it released? Versus when Twilight first came out. Goblet of Fire release date. And um, jeez, can I guess? Two thousand five November. Two thousand five November. Okay, right, and Twilight? Twilight release date. Two thousand seven. Ooh, two thousand eight. Interesting. Boom. There you go. Got it right. Yeah. So no, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Okay. So um, yeah. The thing of Batman is, right, he's meant to be the peak of physical achievement, mm. right, of what you can be. And one of the biggest credits we had for- um, Christian Bale. Bale was, no, no, not Bale, no, sorry, for Affleck. Okay. Was he was physically quite hulking and, and imposing. When he had a fight scene, he would pick up guys and one arm body slam yeah. them. And you're like, that's actually kind of impressive. And if Batman's a badass, that's how he'd fight. Mm. But when Batman fought Bane in Dark Knight Rises- Yeah. It didn't look that impressive at all because Bane didn't look big enough because Bane, Bane's just fucking huge. Yeah. 
right? And Tom Hyde is a good actor, but he didn't. He got big, but he looked bigger in Warrior than he looked yeah, as Bane. Yeah. And it didn't look great. The fight it didn't look particularly impressive at all, and mm-hmm. the fight seemed not that great at all. And just jerky camera angles. Yeah. Whereas, whereas when, when Batfleck was there and Batman vs Superman, terrible film, but yeah, uh, you know, a film's called okay, Batman vs so Superman. Tell me about Robert Pattinson. Then. Well, why do you so think it's going to be bad? Hulking, right? Hulking guy, he, he, peak perfection. Yeah, he was told to put on weight. He goes, nah, you're okay. How did you know that? <laughs> it's been reported. Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> he literally, he's like, they go to him, you should really put on size. The role, he goes, nah. So why did they give him the role then if he didn't comply? It wasn't in the contract to do so. He wanted to make more of a believable character. Batman's never going to be fucking believable. Ever. Nah, never. Right? But they go, Bale's more believable. He didn't put on to size either. Yeah, but Bale's down for Bale did. He did look big. Let's be real. He was the biggest he ever looked. Yeah, Bale's amazingly good at Gaining weight and losing weight for yeah, roles. As we saw with the machinist. machinist. That, Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah, yeah. Him and I think the guy who in Dallas Buyers Club who played uh, Mark McConaughey. Yeah, McConaughey. The weight loss he did for that. Yeah. 50 Cent did one, didn't he? Where yeah. he lost loads of weight. He did 50 what? did a film where he became a cancer patient. No, I don't remember that. Google 50 Cent cancer patient and you see how emancipated he looked for one role he had to do. And he's not looking it up. Cancer patient. Oh, God. Like <laughs> you can see a picture of it, right? He looks like a woman. I, I no comment. Fifth, yeah. fifth, that was him. It wasn't me. Yeah, no, I'm was down me. with Curtis. Just, whoa, he looks good. like a zombie in this one. There Mad. you go. There you go. Yeah. So again, Jesus. impressive, right? What people do for their craft. Yeah. And then you got you got emo boy like yeah nah give me six weeks yeah okay cool. Six weeks later, no change. Mm. So okay, that's going to be a an interesting film. We'll yeah. see how it goes. But I'm not overly enamored by the idea. I wasn't like the fan of the casting anyway. And the problem is, if someone casts badly in a film, the fans are a key token of everything, right? They can make a film Yeah, I mean, big. fans want to go and see an actor of some sort. But they also want to believe the actor of some sort as well. Yeah, if it's not believe, Yeah, but I guess I understand his logic of saying, I want to make this believable because I'm just me. So he's trying to add that believability to it. But as you said, but it's a fucking ba- comic Batman's, film. Batman's not an everyday sort of person. Yeah, but Batman's it's, not it's the idea comic. of an everyday guy became Batman. Yeah. It's a guy a guy went away and trained nonstop over and over again for years to, ele- to achieve this level. Yeah. So to the point where well, the best thing I read ages ago was the real life version of Batman in other media is from Suits. Uh, Gabriel Mark. No, the other dude. The one that plays Mike Ross. Mike Ross actor. Right. He's the real life version of, in that in that of what Batman would be like. Oh, close enough. Yeah. Because yeah. he witty assimilates smart. information, yeah. witty smart, picks everything on, sees it once, wickedly intelligent. Mm. That is how Batman would be, right? So he could really be Batman. Mm. If you add the physicality onto it as well. Yeah. So that's kind of what he's done. That's like if Batman had some sort of condition that made yeah. him so good, that would be the condition he had. He reads something once, he understands it, he memorizes it, he can repeat it again. That's why he's so clever. Mm. Also why he's so obsessive and knows so much and has got the amazing, you know, ability to plan for anything because yeah. he's got that level of depth of ability. That's about power. He had a superpower. It would be Batman is Mike Ross. Yeah. And also he's a badass. Yeah. Chris, and I'm not buying that with Pats at all. Well, you have to wait and see how the film is. I, think I do indeed. I think, I think we're all going to see it because we're all just suckers for it, innit? We'll yeah, but, see yeah what, I'll, it I'll see it, but then the thing is, the trouble is- You're going with the expectation of having the bar so low on the floor that you're just going to be like, all right. Maybe, but also goodwill is spent, right? It's earned and it's spent. Well, how much Stop, goodwill have DC got? Isn't that, that's, that's the point I'm trying to make to you, right? What was the last good DC film you saw? Last good DC film I saw. To do that, I've got to name them, okay? So now I've got to name good DC films. Apart from the Batman trilogy- That's it. Right, I can't think of a good DC film. Exactly, That's I did. I, I haven't said that. I did watch the extended edition version of Batman vs Superman. You had three and a half hours. No, but no, 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 not not Justice League. Oh, sorry, Batman v Batman Superman. Versus Superman. How long was the that? Dawn of Justice, nearly three hours. Yeah, the film made more sense, but again, the comic was so much better. Typical geek, the comics are much better. The comic was fucking excellent. The cartoon was good as well. The cartoon based on the comic. Yeah, that's why it was so good, right? Yeah. And the idea in that one was Batman wasn't Batman. Batman was more. Clint Eastwood. Yeah. He's retired and come back and he beats him with brains mm. rather than just, I'm going to make a big sort of javelin with a bit of kryptonite on the end of it. And That's fuck it, you up. It's just such a bad thing. Your superpower makes you so weak is a piece of green rock. What the, And they lean into it so heavily. No, he's helped by other things as well. Yeah. Like Batman in the, what he did in the, in the comic was he set up a nuclear bomb 
which sets off a mushroom cloud, the debris and blocks the sun out. And blocks the sun out, yeah. Superman's powers from the sun. are from the sun. Exactly. So you, so you can hit by that. nuclear bomb. That wounds them wound anyway. You don't regenerate as well because the sun's blocked off. Mm. Boom, Batman on reactive suit. Yeah. Fucks him up. Yeah. Clever. But yeah, they didn't do that. No. No. So, Eternals as a film, cool. But I would say to you, catch it at home. Yeah, catch it on Disney because Disney did like a massive drop on the weekend. Gone, like you showed me. Oh, they put out. Well, they're, they're they putting put out, out Shang Chi and stuff on Disney Plus though. Yeah, so you got to pay for it still. Oh wait, what? Disney Plus. I think there's, there's Disney Plus Plus. I think it is right. I think it's a case of rather than go straight to Disney Plus for free, you got Disney pay. Plus pay per view. Uh, so like they had for Black Widow. Remember? I haven't watched Black Widow yet. Black know. Widow, you you could watch it straight you can watch away. Watch it now for free, can't yeah. you? Yeah. I don't know for free, but first, maybe it's free now. But I when it first it came now. out, there's like a time period where you can't do it. When it first came out, you had to pay. Yeah. And for three days, you had it, whatever else. Mm. Like, like coincide. <laughs> yeah. It coincided with the cinema, with the cinema release. Actually, I don't think it was because um, yeah. people that we know downloaded it, they, they bought it and it was still available on there, but Disney for like a month after. Okay. So, we have a long history. Yeah. yeah. They still paid for it, right? And that's why Scarlett Hansen sued them. Mm. To go out of a pay per view earnings because mm. you're direct competition with that as That's well. That's the one, yeah. So it's actually, I think. Just change the camera. Hang on. Sure. All right, ignore me. Um, so, I didn't need to change it. But yeah. Okay. Fine. So what I was saying, sorry. Uh, Scarlett Johansson, but we can move on. She sued them, cool. sued them, and everything else go from there. Yeah. Trailers before that, actually. Yeah, Morbius. The Morbius one. That was weird. I thought, I was like, is this Blade? I've never heard of Morbius. You have? No. You, okay, you have. When? The cartoon version of Spider Man, Near Gen Nightmare. Felicia. And he used to have the blood suckers on his hand. Michael Morbius. Oh, that. That's Morbius, bro. Oh, shit. Okay. The vampire thing. Right. The bat-like thing. Do you think it's going to be any good? It's Sony, so we'll see. They're trying to create their own sort of world inside of the Marvel MCU without messing too much. Why can't they just merge into one, man? Because money, man. Money Stupid. and rights. That's all it is. They've got to keep making those... Because the Marvel contract was... Once you stop making films for a number of time, the IP re reverts back to us. Oh, so you have to keep putting something out. In a certain time period. It's why they reboot it so many times. Fucking hell. Because, and also, it's, it's money maker for them. It makes money. Mm. The more it goes, we are Venom. No, I'm joking, man. Morbius. It's like, dude, Venom wasn't that big enough for that to be funny. No. I was still weird. I should, weird out at Eternals when you laughed when they broke the table. You found that quite funny. I did laugh. That's in the trailer, though. <laughs> That exact scene. Oh, okay. I didn't see the trailer. That, that thing ruined it, bro. Right? Uh, that exact scene, the trailer didn't laugh. Everyone's like, ha, ha, go. That exact, that exact scene was in the trailer. trailer. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I literally bother. mouthed it. I care, no, fall, 2004. Fucking how many times you I seen the trailer? Collection. Twice. I didn't watch it once. Okay. <laughs> I, didn't, yeah. I wasn't expecting to watch it. So, okay. I didn't think it was, you know, top of my priority list. But, yeah. Okay, Morbius. Yeah, I guess so. Morbius, we'll see. They're trying to make it some horror thing. Like, Venom's kind of. Border horror, border comic. I haven't watched Venom versus Carnage. I didn't think it was worth it or the effort. <laughs> the ending of it brings Venom into uh, Spider-Man universe. There we go. Literally, like randomly, they I, I haven't seen it. I was read about it. He goes, "Oh, by the way, I've got other powers." Like Venom goes to Brock, mm -hmm. like what, and sort of teleports him, mm. and he ends up in the universe where Spider-Man is. And J. Jonah Jameson goes, "And Peter Parker is Spider-Man." Right. It's like, oh, okay, cool. So he's going to have some sort of role to play in the next Quite probably. Home one. Now, the trouble I got is with Venom is that he's different in MCU than the comics. Mm. In the comics, he comes from Spider Man. It's right. the same thing. Oh, yeah, he does. Isn't he? He's like Spawn. He's, he's Spawn as like a not offspring. He's but... a symbiote that comes down and takes over Spider Man's body. And then and comes moves off Spider Man and, and then leaves Spider Man. He's more like a jealous lover. Yeah. <laughs> the original comics, though, the original idea was Venom was a woman. Venom was a woman Spider-Man saved, and because she saved her, she caught, caught her. She had ended up having an abortion or a miscarriage. Fuck it out. So she was going to be a woman who was like, hate Spider-Man because he cost her the baby. Yeah. And they were like, okay, fine. So she had the symbiote powers and everything else. And the Marvel directors were like, we can't have a woman beating up Spider-Man. Fans just won't buy it. So instead, they made Eddie Brock Spider-Man instead. Uh, Venom, uh, Venom instead. That's where it came from. So that'll be in the new films now. Yeah, it's all the interconnectivity of different I films. I just feel like everything together. is just really cinema dominant by superhero films now. There's not many independent films that come out that are actually worth watching. I'm sorry, but I grew up a geek and I had years of shit no, films. No, I get it. But then it's like, okay, what else is there really to watch that's going to make money that people are thinking, I will watch it independent? The reboot of, of Matrix. Yeah, I mean, 
I need to watch the last two because I think I was too young to understand them properly. They were shit. Why were they so bad? They were just awful. The first one's such a cool thing. The first one was great. The first one, the, the I rewatched the first one. Try, with Sandra then they try and ago. re-add levels to it and make it so convoluted, yeah. make it like it's a, it's a level under a Why level was two under and three a level. So bad. Just awful films, really bad. They are, they are to Matrix what the prequels and Star Wars are to Star Wars. Right, so episodes one, two, and three. Yes, yeah, are two, together. Yeah, yeah, they are that bad. Yeah, I mean, Matrix Four looks. It looks like it's just going to be. You know, welcome back to the world and stuff. And we've rebooted well, the room, it. The rumor is the main character now is going to be Trinity, not um, Neo. That's the Why? rumor. I don't know. Women, well, girl power, who knows? But Fuck it's off, a, it, again, man. it's a rumor though, right? Yeah, like, but like, if a, that a, happens, a lot of, yeah. it's like, this is getting ridiculous. Like, I understand, but yeah. chill. If you're bringing back an old franchise, let the yeah. franchise run how it was set up. Well, it's like Ghostbusters, right? They reproject with girls and no one liked it. We saw the Ghostbusters new trailer again now, and I was like, I don't care. Yeah, but you were, also, yeah, true. Ghostbusters, I think, had its time come and gone. It's not as a beloved IP as, as, no, as it's I thought not. it was. Hence why I'm like, just let it go, let it die. Yeah, let it just run, right? Yeah. Yeah. But the women let it run and die. They were terrible. I didn't bother watching it. it not, I, I saw not, the, not because it's a women thing. I just didn't, didn't want care. to see it. it. I saw the first half now and thought, you're kidding me, right? No, thank you. Really? On to the next one. Absolutely. It was terrible. Again, especially when it's available on streaming stuff people will just hit and run very quickly yeah and you do run quite quickly when you see it yeah so, yeah no and then what we're involved got upset saying oh we've been criticized by you know bad reviewers and people who are you know for the patriarchy and like no dude if you shit your shit yeah it's like that whole Chappelle thing you know when he came in an apology for the trans thing you mean the show i went to and he did the apology and didn't do an apology no 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 so you had your show you went to yeah but after that, he was doing like, he had a speech where, you know, I will meet with trans activists on the following oh, reasons. Oh, right, that one. Yeah, yeah. And the final thing he said was, I'll do it on my occasion, my Tuesday, watch all my specials. And you have to agree that this person isn't funny. Hannah Gatsby, Hannah Gatsby, Gatsby is funny. not funny. Yeah. Like, oh, because she's moaning. She's, she's always moaning. Yeah, but she's moaning that because Dave Chappelle, because Netflix haven't banned Dave Chappelle, she's getting death threats. Don't how, ask. How, how, that's, there's no logic in that whatsoever. Because you can that that's like because trying she's to draw a that's like enough. trying to draw a comparison from nothing. Yeah, Honestly, yeah, absolutely you can say, "Oh, it's raining today because I cried yesterday." What? That doesn't make any sense. You're just making a comparison of something and trying to draw some sort of relationship to it. Well, disclaimer: I don't know who she is. Apparently, she's a comedian. She so she is a comedian, and Dave Chappelle on one of his acceptance speeches he gave a few years ago, right? He went on stage and he said. Thank you to everyone else who was in the same thing. And he mentioned Hannah Gatsby because she was in the same category for him for his comedy special. Okay. But he won. Yes. And he said, well, everybody said that this this special was bad to watch and stuff because he was a little bit on the nose. Right. Is, is on the nose the right phrase? I don't know. But he was pushing boundaries at that point. Close and to he the mentioned, bone. Yeah. He mentioned Hannah Gatsby and he said she did a good job and stuff. So I was yeah. like, okay, so you know who she is. But now he's like, now you're not funny. I'm like, okay, are you basing that off our last special? Yeah, because the first special was, was apparently decent. Yeah. The second one was apparently terrible. That's, and that, she that's did, what it is. And she had really low numbers on it. Yeah. Netflix never showed her numbers at all. No. Right? But then she did really badly. And now she's like, oh, Dave Chappelle, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know if she's trans or I don't know what she is. I don't know what she is. I... But... Yeah. I don't know enough to care, really. It's, That's it's, it's it, right? Sad, it, it's it? someone else making their name don't off it. Know how, it. I don't care yeah. enough to Google her and sit and be like, who are you? Let yeah. me watch you. Are you funny? Like, yeah. no. If someone fine. tells me I they're not funny, I'm like, cool, they ain't funny. Done. Especially if a comedian says they're not funny. Normally, they're quite supportive of one another. They are. They and are I'm indeed. like, if yeah. you say that yeah. they're not funny, I'm like, okay, I kind of believe you because yeah. you're very funny. But I judge people based on the comedians they like. Like we said, but one of my guys saw earlier said he preferred Mo Gilligan, Dave Chappelle. I judge you as a person. Don't get me wrong. I like Mo, but I don't think he's the same. Yeah, level exactly. As Dave. Like, dude, they're, they're two very different types of comedy as well. No, funny is funny. No, but they're two different types of comedy. So, for example, Mo's very local British comedy, Dave's international comedy. Okay, that's the difference. Well, like for me, it was a case of if you have Paul Chowdhury or Russell Peters. Russell Peters is better. Right, Paul because Chowdhury, Russell Peters appeals to more minorities than Paul Chowdhury. Paul Chowdhury's got a very sort of set. He he has a set thing and he always picks on the Asians. But Russell Peters is like, I'm going to pick on everybody, not yeah. just Asians. I'm going to pick on black people. I'm going to pick on all types Chinese, of people. Yeah, all Asians, right? yeah. And he's like, I'm going to pick on all Asians, not just Indians. And I'm yeah. like, that's smart. Yeah. And then he builds his own 
improvisation skills off that as well yeah. which you see in his specials and in his little clips he puts on instagram and i'm like that's impressive i think what cost me poor childhood credit with me was roast battle he went on it on the on the um comedy which central one, one. comedy central mm. he was on roast battle most of his best lines were i did wembley you couldn't do wembley market kept repeating like, two, like a couple of times i thought dude man. oh i see okay yeah i mean and he lost some of them do pre-rehearse lines and stuff yeah, uh, they, they all do pre-rehearsed lines they all do it in like nick cannon's wild and out remember like yeah, yeah was cool. they all had their like wild let me style. have my little wild style thing yeah straight back and then some of those you could see that they improvise back and i was like that's good because you've gone off what the person just it said to you. off it as well yeah that's smart but people that come on with like pre-rehearsed stuff it's not it, well rest about this pre-rehearsed no, pre about this pre-rehearsed you can see it's pre-rehearsed but it would help your case more if you went back on something that they said to you just a few minutes If you were ago. quick enough to do it, yeah. If you're quick enough. If you've got yeah. the wit for it. Yeah, absolutely. Right. This so is why I rate... Um, the Roast Master, Jeff Ross. Jeff Ross. And that's why I rated him so much when he, when he was yeah, there. Yeah, because he can come up and be funny that. with it as well. And he ripped off like seven yeah. different types of people. I, I would love to go to a roast battle in America in yeah. the comedy store. We don't. I think yeah. he doesn't there, wherever else. I think it's Kill Tony, I think, it's where cool. they do that. Pass. Maybe. It would be cool to watch. I'd be like... I, I just, uh, Edinburgh, film festival. Yeah, they have them there. I see. So good. Mm. I have another film festival, comedy festival. Yeah, the Fringe. Home got to go. Got it. I, I I saw a guy there, and um, literally, like, I went to what's called the superhero battle. Again, I'm a geek. Um, each comedian had a superhero they had to say was better than the other ones. Yeah, and they all put their own superheroes. You can't do the same one twice. And, so on. and then there was like a tournament edition. So every, as the weeks went on, some guys came back and did it again. The idea is if I come and I represent, let's say Goku, and I win that, yeah. that round, I'll come back again. It's a free show. People pay at the end as a donation. Yeah, yeah. But then people are like, that guy was really funny. Oh, by the way, I've got a show as well, guys. And you know I'm funny because I did this other thing. So you don't use, uh, use up any of your material either because you've done a sub I see. So you just come back and see the same thing again and again. Yeah, but, but no, 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 no. You can riff if you want to. The idea is, whenever I talk about Goku in my show, he's not part of my show at all. But I'm that good a comedian, I can make it look funny with three of the guys, bounce yeah. off each other. And you're like, I liked him, didn't like him, I liked him, grab their flyers, I'll see you at your own show. Oh, right. So it's like free marketing. In marketing, that's how yeah. it works, the free fringe, right? Smart. We saw a, a Polish guy called Victor Protescu. No, not Polish, a Romanian guy. So funny. Mm. So good. One battle, he was Jesus. He goes, hey, I'm a superhero. Why? I got powers. <laughs> I turn water into wine. Yeah. Yeah. I have holes in my hands and I can keep going. Yeah. I can come back from the dead, bro. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like I'm legit, fam. I have two lives. I walk on water. Say something. And I can disappear when I want to and no one knows why. Exactly. See, superhero, right? Mm. Or we're like, ah, very good point, superhero. So he he did that. And and then at one point, someone in the crowd shouted, do a rose battle. So all the three comedians on stage, one was Mystique, one was Jesus, one was the Punisher. Mm. He just ripped them apart. And Russ, because he also goes to Rose Battles as well. So Edinburgh Fringe Festival, it's not just a case of you're there to do comedy and just do your show and work on it. You can also develop new bits and bounce up other comedians. And if you get a skit or a bit that works really well and it riffs up and it lands really well, oh, I can actually use that later on. Yeah. Get inspired by other people around you. Mm. So that was a good thing for go to or go to. So yeah, before we back on it, I think it came back this year. Didn't go this year, but I will go next year for sure. Like Absolutely fun. love it. Edinburgh is yeah. a dope ass city. Great place. Just a long African drive. Yeah. You want to talk about um, the Black Album as well? Today, on this day in 2003, the Black on Album came out. This day in 2003. So the Black Album was Sunday released. Sunday the 14th of November. It wasn't Sunday. Well, no. I'm saying today's date now for people. Yeah, sorry. Sunday the 14th okay. of November for listeners, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. No. But yeah, no. Came out, Black Album. Great album. Must have been a Friday because they normally do album drops on Fridays, don't they? Yeah, normally. Normally it's a case. I think Mom and Pop used to be a case of, in the big stores, it came out on the Friday. Yeah. But then to give Mom and Pop stores, as in smaller stores, a chance, it yeah. came out of those stores uh, a couple of days early. So you always get them from there first to get the first wave. So they get some of the pickup as well at the same time. There's a Black Album came out. Legendary album. Mm. I didn't appreciate how good an album actually was until years later. Yeah. Because it, 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 it was always going to be, the original concept for that album was, Oh, by the way, guys, I'm a massive hip-hop geek as well. Mm. So, so far, we've got Comic Geek, Hip-Hop Geek. What else? Gaming Geek. Gaming Geek. Geek Geek. Yeah. Um, trainer Geek. Oh, Trainer, man. Hip-Hop, man. That's part of the culture. There you go. Um, there was a concept for that album. 
yeah, it was his final album. He's meant to retire on it, but it wasn't meant to be what it was. It was meant to be 12 songs, 12 different producers, mm. one song each. That was it. And, and no, it didn't go like that. It was a, there were some producers who did a couple. Yeah. So they, they had a, a, in theory, release list of who produced what song. And he goes, the goal is I'm going to release this album. No marketing, just a black square, just a date, a black square, no artwork, no nothing. Just put it out there. If you get it, you get it. That didn't happen either. It didn't happen either. But then he goes, that's what my goal was. Mm. But then Def Jam turned around to him and say, yo, listen, it's the fourth quarter. We're a bit low of sales this year. We need you to go hard in this one. It's your big thing, you know, make a thing, you know, anything else. Uh, wasn't he president at the time? No. No? He's, no, he retired, then came back oh, to president. Oh, right. Okay, fine, fine. So with that album, I remember, I remember, I remember the front cover of that album. Yeah. It's like him with that cap. See, you had that front cover. There were, there were multiple covers. The right. cover I had was a black tile with a sticker that said Jay-Z Black Album stuck on it. Mm. I bought the album, got the sticker, peeled it off. Right. It's a black album. It was, you buy a CD, you put it on your, shirt, your CD rack. Right, got it. It's the one black album. It was like, whoa, statement. Mm. I get the original picture. I think the whole album, I mean, maybe two bad songs. And I was about yeah, 14, yeah. 15 track album. I remember talking about this a while ago. Yeah, there's only like two bad songs. But you were saying, you got on here, Fade 2. What? Fade to Black. Fade to Black. The documentary. The documentary. I watched that again that recently. That was one of the documentaries I had on my little iPod back in the day. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yes, I remember. I watched it numerous times. One thing I remember from that documentary was when he did a freestyle to, um, what was it? Uh, LL Cool J. When I'm alone in my room, he redid that. On stage. That. Yeah. On stage Fuck that. My name is Hogan. I'm a thug. Yeah. It was fucking brilliant. And I was like, wow, okay. That was some nice improvisation you did. I, I think he'd done it a few times. I think it's part of the show. Yeah. Um, because he had a live band with him, right? Yeah, he did. What I love about it was when he went on stage in that band, he had a uh, Black Quest from Roots. No, yeah, from the Roots. Black Quest yeah. drummer, right? And they go, yo, we're here, Matt Square oh, Garden. Questlove. Questlove, Questlove. Yeah. Back, yeah, so I'm going to think of Black Thoughts. Yeah, yeah. Right. Questlove. He goes, yo, we're nervous, but JT goes, yo, just think about it, it's Boston, yeah? So it's Boston, not the, not the garden, right? Mm. And he comes on, he performs. I love the way that documentary was made. They cut him back. Yeah, they forward, cut back and forth to when he met up with, with producers and how he worked Rick with- Rick Ross, Nine Nine Problems. He worked with Timberland. He worked with Pharrell. He yeah, worked with Kanye West. Yes. The Kanye West thing was quite cool because now to Kanye West now being Kanye West. He no goes, one knew him at that point. No, no, no. no, no he was known. He was, no, I mean like as a rapper. He hadn't put out the college shop out at that point. He hadn't put it out, but people he, people knew him enough to know it's Kanye West. Yeah, yeah. He goes, one they, thing I'm proud they of is- didn't yeah. know that he had the rapping ability in him. I think he maybe had put out uh, this way. Ooh, my ex girl wanted to leave me just because I got a girlfriend. A new girl told me now she's a Christian. A freak girl told me now she's a Christian. Yeah, yeah. Hang Pulling on. girls to the bench like a six man. This way? This way, release date. Dilated Peoples came out in 2004. So, uh, so, so, yeah, yeah, that, that, make, that makes sense. Okay, then. but when did College Dropout come out? 2005? Yeah, yeah. But then Black Island came out 2003. College Dropout release date. Yeah. February 2004. It doesn't add up. It does because hey, what, what you're forgetting. Kanye was a producer. How right. many songs he produced before that? He made H no, the Izzo, the Bl Blueprint albums. I'm not saying that. Yeah. People didn't know Kanye had rapped prior to that on like an actual song. Mm. So yeah. when I watched that documentary, bear in mind the Fate of Black thing came out after Kanye had put out the college dropout. Yes. So I was like, oh, I know who Kanye is. And I was like, oh, I didn't know that he was just a producer. Oh, oh I knew, I knew, well, okay. I knew Kanye I was. was. A kid, right? yeah, you, I'm you, to you from my point. Yeah, <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Um, Obviously you would know, but I didn't know that. Yeah, but like, for me, Kanye was the guy who made that album, uh, the uh, Blueprint album. Blueprint album, Blueprint 2. He made that Beanie Seagulls tracks, even those freeway tracks. Yeah. All this. He was, him and Just Blaze just everywhere. Mm. And yeah, then you see him like, you know, Kanye making a song, getting anxious, throwing a few rhymes in there yeah. as well. And the other song, Last Call, where he explains yeah. to him, you know. Where he explains how he got signed to Rockefeller, Rockefeller in the end. I was going to say Rock Nation, but it wasn't called Rock Nation. No. <laughs> no. To Rockefeller, yeah. Yeah, so again, that's cool seeing him then in going through it all. And the reason why I watched it was because he's put oh, that thing with Noriega, hasn't he? The two interviews on drunk, on Drink Champs. Yeah, I haven't watched this yet. I need to watch it at some point. But okay. he went on this interview and he apparently was dropping dropping fire everywhere. <laughs> he was throwing shots, dropping fire, doing everything. Mm. So um, yeah, he was more lucid and uh, logical than he was on the... Uh, Rogan Joe Rogan podcast. podcast, which is fucking so hard to listen to, but he does go off on rants like, yeah, like he does start here and he goes oh over there and then goes back to here again. Like, How the fuck did that go off yeah. and back again? Like a pendulum, not like a pendulum, just just like did you? And I'm like Laura's like, oh, whoa, you still talking about this? And he goes, yeah, I'll bring it back in a minute. 
He did come back eventually, yeah. but he wasn't the greatest link ever. But yeah, he was dropping all sorts. Like you go, Just Blaze just copied me. Like Just Blaze just stopped copying my shit. Like I respect you, you're cool, but acknowledge you copied me. That's what you did. Wow. Out there like, whoa. And he goes, versus man, I do versus. You know, we do our versus battle here, right? Yeah, yeah. He goes, I do versus, I've got to take on like four guys at the same time. I've got to take on a producer, I've got to take on a rapper, I've got to take on this guy, everyone. I've got to take on Timberland and Drake. Mm. Take them both on. And I could battle you just on drums with Timberland. He goes, we could break down to the type of drums we're using in songs. Yeah. And that level of sort of, you know, as a music geek, you're like, okay, cool, I can respect what you're saying here, what you're saying here, to add another level of how difficult it will get. Just showing you that there can be terms applied to a versus battle, which people don't believe me in my gym and give me grief to this fucking day or the one we did saying you put fucking limitations on against Indy and you fucked him and it wasn't a fair thing. And like, fuck you guys. It is what it is. <laughs> I won. I'm going to take that W and ye. <laughs> so um, yeah, he does that. He talks about uh, Beanie. Oh, he dissed Talib. Really? Yeah. He goes, Talib's not a good rapper. I'm not a fan of Talib. I don't fuck with Talib. But he, but Talib put him on. Well, yeah. he said that. He said one well, like, the reason, reason why. Yeah, 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 exactly. Really, you don't love him for that. Okay. Yeah, because they go common. Because Nori got a theory. He goes, you know, two, you know, either one or the other. If you can't choose, take a shot. If you can't choose, take a shot. Right. Yeah. Common or Talib? It's common. Talib shit. <laughs> I don't fuck with Talib's raps. Why? <laughs> he says, what, what I had to tell people was, I was known as the producer, backpacker rapper. Yeah, yeah. Right? First player with the bands in the backpack. Yeah. Always said, when I ram, I say something significant. Now I'm talking about money, holes, and rims again. Yeah, yeah. Right? He goes, well, I wasn't really a backpacker anyway. I was a guy from the streets who hadn't killed nobody. Yeah. So I couldn't really be the streets guy. Yeah. So I said I'm a backpacker instead. Mm -hmm. That's why I was there with Peppy the hats and this and that. Yeah, he had that little look. That look yeah. going on. He goes, I was trying to be a backpacker then stylish. Yeah. But I'm from the streets. That's why I was all rapping about hoes, cash money, all that yeah, other shit. Yeah. That's why none of his rapping was ever backpacker rap. Yeah. And he goes, that's why, who the fuck wants to be Talib Kweli? Truthfully, I want to rhyme like common sense. Yeah, I, I get five it, mil. but still. Yeah. His skills sold. A good you can't his, skills, his skills sold. Tooth be told, I yeah, probably. I get be. it, about I get your quote in lyrics, right? I, I am, understand. Absolutely. But what I'm saying is, yeah, Talib Kweli is still a very good rapper. But he doesn't rate him. He says, I as a rapper, as, he doesn't rate as him. a rapper voice, he'd rather be Buster Rhymes. Okay, that's fair. But still, solely on his own, when Talib Kweli came out at the oh, Dave look, Chappelle thing and dropped yeah. a quick thirty-two, I was in awe. I was like, wow. I've seen Talib live. He's, I, I he's phenomenal. He's phenomenal. Yeah. I think he's a very rapper, but all I'm saying is Yeezy doesn't fuck with him. Right? And then Weird. he goes, I haven't seen the guy in years. And then Nori goes, did you see him with Dave Chappelle? And he goes, oh shit, yeah, I did see him. I got to fight him now. Fuck, I've been cussing him for ages. I saw him the other day. <laughs> and it's like, this guy, he's man. Lost, man. He, he's, he, he's, he's cool. Like he, him and Kim, he's got a thing about Kim Kardashian. Obviously he goes, he's still my wife. We're not divorced at all. There's no paperwork in there at all. Yeah, but she's dating like Pete Davidson now. So. Uh, like rumored, right? Rumored. He's dating someone else as well, right? It's fucked. He goes, but I want to keep my family together. Okay, cool. That's yeah. what you do. But you're a bit too crazy, a bit too hype sometimes. Yeah. Um, but he goes, one thing he wants, he wants her to be a lawyer and pass the bar exam. Mm. He goes, because he goes, but there are people that don't want to do that. When she passes the bar exam, you know, her cleavage is going to be a bit more hidden, just going to be a little bit yeah, longer. Yeah. And girls are going to aspire to be, oh, Kim Kardashian, the hot lawyer, mm. not the hot girl who does all the pretty pictures. Yeah. And he goes, that's not going to do well with people's brands. Mm. I'm not going to like that about her at all either. He's very paranoid. Uh, but then again, equally, at the same time, there's reasons why he's paranoid about it as well. He's like, they want rappers to be dumb and keep people dumb and say dumb things. Bone Thugs and Harmony were told by the uh, CIA, we want to make this kind of music. It's, it's documented they said that. Why? Making this ignorant hood thug music because it keeps people listening to that sort of music in that mentality. The last yeah. thing you want is people who are organized. Yeah, but equally, when it comes to hip hop, there's smarter rhymes. Like how you said yesterday, you were on the way home and you were listening to yeah, you were listening to Prime Prime, which is yeah, DJ Royce Five Nine and Royce Royce Five Nine, Absol, loads of guys, right. and they were just smashing it with lines, smashing it. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, you can still appreciate good lyrics, and you don't get that in a lot of normal musical sing along songs. Yeah, you don't get that. So mm -hmm. you can say it's a street mentality. Fine. But equally, it's where some of the best shit gets made too. Lyrically. You say street mentality, but they're talking about hoes, bitches, money, shooting. That's what, the, that's what they meant. Right? Yeah, yeah. Right, I got Prime Album. Prime Album is just 
fantastic for rhyming. It's yeah. an old album, right? But it's, I want to hear something real. That to me is real. If I want to go back to the source of music, of hip hop, what I love, that's what I go to. Other stuff's cool. Drake stuff's cool and everything else. He doesn't really kill too many pictures or anything else. That's fine. Mm. You know, but he should try and say like, he's trying to make music, diff- make music differently. Make it to a different level. Yeah. You know, make, make, make it about different things. Like a song about God and love and, you know, something you can play in the house. I was yeah. like, Donda's got no swears on it, apparently. You can't. What, Donda? Got no swears it on it. It doesn't, but he still calls girls throat goats. So, yeah, it depends how you want to say it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But well, I, 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 I find was that weird how he doesn't have swears on it, but he still bleeps it out. And I'm like, so why bother saying it then if you're that passionate about it? Well, does it affect the art? It's the question. You've got a gap in the song now. It's like, it's like how when you listen to songs back in the day on the radio and it's yeah. got a gap and it would just subtly, just maybe like 5% annoy you that there's a gap. Well, it depends how it was done. I bought the Gangstar album, Owners. Do you remember? Yeah, I remember that. And it was a clean version. And for years, I never knew it we was never a clean really, version. Cause it wasn't just, but I it thought was, it was styled yeah. that way. However, Kanye didn't do that. He just said, oh, let me fuck this. Oh, shit, I said that. Let me this. <laughs> and it's just like, wait, I know what you're saying. Just say it. It's not like you scratched yeah. or you made something smart over it or you had a sound effect. It should be like a that. smash. Or a, it should be like a little... Duck, duck. That yeah. would work, right? Yeah. If you do it well enough. But then again, it might not, it might not fit the aesthetic of the song. Yeah. Right? And, and you got to think how the art's made. If they were to edit it out, it's, it's like putting, like if you got naked, you know you go to um, museums, museums with naked women pictures everywhere. Yeah. Imagine they went around and put like a, like censored stamps over their nipples everywhere. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> right? It's that kind of level. Uh, you know, like, well, no, this show for what's shown. When, having said that, I hate museums. I'll probably enjoy it more if they had you know, stamps over the nipples just make it funny to me. <laughs> Why? I'd laugh. Why I'd laugh. I'd be like, that's more. fucking hilarious. Museums are the most, I find paintings, old painting museums be absolutely fucking boring. It's like yeah. looking, the best thing that you can give you is going to someone's house, looking at a wedding album of a wedding you didn't go to and you know no one who was there. That's what a museum paintings feel like. Yeah. Yeah, I've been to the Louvre. I'm like, all right, cool. I'd rather go to the Natural History Museum instead. You know, when you go to the Louvre, I'd be like, yo, I'm here to just accumulate some steps today. Uh, it is so it is step worthy let's just go and accumulate a bunch of steps that's the mentality I'm going it is step it. worthy man like, let's just go and do some steps that's I'm it like, oh go see Mona Lisa bro that thing is like a far away thing the Mona Lisa right I got that I was expecting it to be massive and I walked up to it and I was like yo there's a load of people in front taking pictures of it I'm like the pictures are in high definition on Google why are you taking a picture of it and then I got to the front and I was like there's this massive gap between me and it. And I was like, this is, this is shit. It's like when you go to a concert and you're at the very front. Yeah. This is like a gap, isn't there? In the front where you are, the railings, well, the gap not on the stage. Well, a Travis Scott concert there, is it? Right? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking well, hell. No, there's, there's still a gap there. You yeah, just there's still got a gap crushed. there until he says, jump over, it's cool. Jump He's, over. I, I, no, to be fair, I've not followed any of it. I know there's a crush. I've been to concerts. Yeah, yeah the crush you know. thing happened, but uh, pre- he's got he's got previous to doing shit like this. So what, so, what did he do? Tell me. I, I still well, know what he did. On, let me just check the camera. Are we good in the camera? He's only okay. done it, yeah. All right. So what he did was right. he carried on the concert when people were basically dying around him. Yeah, but okay. Okay, we're right now here yeah. on the podcast. There's lights there, there's a light there. Okay, so here's what happened, right? There were ambulances trying to get in, get into the actual area of yes. the concert. Yeah, and he just carried on, and I'm like, you can see there's an ambulance trying to get through, and people were shouting at him in between songs, "Stop! We need help!" From the side, we need help from, like, from his people him. or the crowd. No, the crowd was saying, "Stop! We need help! Stop!" And he, he said, "Put your middle finger up if you want me to carry on," and they did, so he carried on, and I'm like, you can see around you, I don't there's think... people giving CPR to others that are literally dead on the floor. I'm not sure. I, I don't know how well you can see because, like I said, if you're on stage at a concert, the, I get that. Like, lights right now, I can't see. I understand all. that. However, he did stop the concert at the time, so I was like, okay, you've stopped it now. Yeah. So you know something was up. Okay. So Fine. you can't just stop and start again. If you stop, you're like, all right, what's going on? I got to someone brief me, like side stage, yeah. my management. Someone yeah, tell but, me what's going no, on. No, for me, I blame his management now. Like if something happens, someone's like, this should happen. Man, run on stage, pull me like, yo. Eh this yeah the you reason, the reason why all this happens is to give people some insight into what happened yeah I'm i hate when you say context it does my head he, he says he hates it when i say context so give you people say all like, the time that's why give people yeah. like background yeah what happened was he had this event called astro world where it's basically a massive outdoor event yeah on the day he was encouraging people on twitter to storm it and over overpopulate the concert what the fuck so people were overpopulating it they stormed it they jumped over the barricade that's willful they got ignorance in. so that's one yeah Right, loads of people are inside. Secondly, when the whole thing started, 
people sort of surged to the front more. As it always happens. Every but when concert. that happened, people yeah. were saying, if you didn't jump with the crowd in, in sync with them, you were getting trampled. Yeah. Well, and you were going to die. Basically. That happened. Okay. Okay. And there's, there's no space for people to get out of the front. It was all so over, over, overpopulated and okay. overcrowded. It was ridiculous. So basically, what you're saying there is really the issue there is overcrowding. Yeah, the issue was overcrowding and That's security. It. That's they, it. They, they, they fucked it I've up. I've been to concerts where when the artist comes on stage, I'm an, I would say, without blowing my trumpet too much, yeah. I'm an OG of concerts. Okay? Yeah, yeah. I know how this shit works. I've been with you. I took it to that Watch the Throne tour, right? I remember that. When the rush comes, be ready. You're going to get crushed. There's going to be a wave move this way. Yeah. That's cool. Go with the wave. There's always going to be a correction afterwards. Make sure you push back just as hard to get back to your old spot. Yeah. You flow with the concert waves back and yeah. forth. That's how it works. Mm -hmm. You're going to get crushed. You're going to get squashed, push back, everything else. Yeah. Grab bad luck. All that kind of shit. That's normal, standard, standard concert shit. The issue you got here is there's too many people there. There were too many people there. A bunch of people were, you know, clearly on drugs and stuff. And when yeah. the ambulances were trying to get through, right. some of these kids were jumping on the top of the ambulance thinking it was a part of the show. And they're like, oh, it's an ambulance. Let's just jump on top of it and oh, fucking not let fuck. it get through. That's security issue. Security will be there on is, it. And nobody around them was like letting the ambulance, ambulance do their go job through to help people. Fuck me. So okay. It was just a massive fuck up by everybody, all parties involved, right? I think Live Nation fucked it by having the concert go ahead when they knew it was overpopulated. They didn't stop the concert, nor did Travis, nor did his you management. Got, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so many fuck ups. The moment here. you've called an ambulance in, right? And you know there's people down, right? Bro, eight people died at the concert. And hundreds more injured. I was like, yeah. hang on. People died at a concert. That happens very rarely. And his yeah. concerts, is, it, it, it's like a vibe of mixing with rage music. Yes. And mixing with normal music. When I say rage, I mean, sorry, not, not, not metal. normal hip-hop, right? Okay. So heavy metal hip-hop, basically. Yeah, That's yeah. his vibe. And I was like, okay, which means you're going to have people having mosh, mosh pits. pits. Mosh pits, yeah. these mosh pits, there's no space for them. So everyone's fucking mushing. But that's crowd that, that's crowd control. Yeah. So the crowd control was really, really bad. Okay, so the liability is that. He on Twitter, he tries to do this apology and the apology is so bad. I, I've, I, at this point now, you I've, saw read, the I've apology, read the apology right? stuff like that. Yeah. He put a filter on his fucking face. He tried to cry. He just looks it stupid. wasn't happening. And I was like, what, what really kills it really is he went to an after party hosted by Drake after the concert. Right. And people are like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. So after, and he goes, oh, you know, I'm willing to pay for the funeral expenses of the people who died. It's like, yeah, dude, it man. wasn't a good look for him. I don't know what's gonna if he's gonna have any repercussions come from it. He's he's getting cancelled right now. That even like he had a big thing on yeah, Fortnite. Here's the thing, right? No, you, no, him, you, him, him cancelling is like cancelling doesn't affect him predominantly as a being, but it fucks up his money. Mm. That's what they're gonna do is fuck up his money, right? Like like the baby. But people are still gonna listen to his music. Yeah, but yeah, but you can't, that you can't stop. But like his concert appearance is done, endorsement deals done, disappearance done. No I don't think anybody him. pulled their pulled their Fortnite um, have pulled him already. Fortnite pulled him. Cool. I don't think he's lost any other sponsorships. He has his appearances. His appearances at certain things have been pulled. Right. I'd be curious to know what Jordans do with the Cactus Jacks. He's got. A, he's they got, ain't gonna care. Huh? They ain't gonna care. They might just pull him. About the amount of money that they make off it, they're not gonna care. They might just pull. Wait, look, look. Michael Jordan's phrase is, you know, white guys buy Jordans. Don't Republicans buy Jordans? Yeah, Republicans too. buy Jordans. Too. Yeah, like. Uh, let's be real. They're not going to pull that unless something goes seriously wrong. Ironically, here's the it. thing. If they pull it, it will just mean, the resale, just mean the resale market. It will just the market. So either woof. way, Nike win. So yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. up to them. Well, Jordan wins, yeah. Yeah, so then they're, they're not going to be bothered by that. I don't think right. it's going to be a massive deal for them. But it was just a fuck up how it all happened and it was horrible to read. I've, I've, I've read stories about Woodstock in the past Yeah, and they said that that was bad. Yes. And this is reminiscent of like, Oh, I was like, oh, I saw the documentary Firefest. Yeah, Firefest really? was watching it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. This is similar to that. No, well, it's worse. People actually died. Yeah, no one, no one died, died at Firefest. Fire Everyone's got disappointed. Yeah, off. but this was people dying. Yeah, it's, it's it's madness. And Firefest still to this day, just on the side note, how the fuck Ja Rule gets away with no fucking charges on that? I do not know. He still tries. <laughs> yeah, but he's like, like no, nah, I wasn't involved. I, I was hoodwinked. I was it, bamboozled. It, it, was, it, it wasn't a failure. It was just up. bad marketing. Yeah, yeah. It, I was it, like, what? It, it wasn't fraud. It was just bad marketing. No, dude, you were aware what was going down. Yeah. You were a prick. Yeah. Never liked Ja, man. Why? 50 all the way. Because of all the beef for 50? No, but even before that, just like, he was just that little dude who tried to be two pat DMX and he wasn't. Mm. The only song I liked him on really was um, Can I Get a Fuck You? With Jay-Z. Yeah. And, that and that was a feature. Yeah. <laughs> that was even yeah. a song. And then, he, then he was the R&B guy. So music, you had Jay-Z was there and you had people that come along. So Mace was on fire 
But then DMX came and DMX the game out and came yeah. hard. And Jarfall came back and came soft mm. with the R&B shit, smashing gear. Yeah, but he smashed it with the R&B oh, he, stuff. Oh, he did. He, he did. He owned the 2000s for a long Not time. Not all 2000s. I think, I think for the four first years. Four three or years. five years of the 2000s? Yeah, everywhere. Him. I think two, probably two, 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 one to about oh four, three years, I think, three yeah. year cycle. Yeah, because yeah, you come on, fall off, come on again. And then when 50 came out, 50 just went for him. And I loved it. Yeah. Mixtape battles, ripping the songs off everything. 50 went hard. Mm. And I respected it so much. because 50, 50 sounds guy. a bit rough like that, I ain't going to lie. But he, he, he was actually paid by labels to not do their songs. Because the songs came out, he'd do his version of it. So, um, I'm going to love you better. A little Cool J song. Yeah. Bitch, I love my cheddar. <laughs> Baby, if you give it to me, yeah. I'll give it to you. I know what you want. That's Buster you know Rhymes. I got yeah, it. Yeah. Baby, if you get on your knees, put me in your mouth. And suck me up. You know I got it. <laughs> oh, <fuck> <laughs> that was 50, man. Every song that came out, he did his version of on he the mixtape. He did that on a mixtape called The Three-Headed Monster. He did that with, um, oh, what was the song called? He he remixed a bunch of songs on that. Yeah. Like, like up and coming songs at that yeah. moment. That was when Cracker Bottle came out with Eminem. And Cracker the Bottle, the Three-Headed Monster. Part of, yeah, yeah. Yeah, him, Dr. Dre, and, um, and M? Eminem. M? They called yeah. it Three-Headed Monster. Yeah. And there was one song that he remixed Oh, that's it. Um, T Pain, he made the people say yeah. Oh yeah, that one. Okay. Yeah, and he just remixed over that. Yeah. And it was just like, yo, this is very explicit to listen to. And I was listening to this like fifteen, <laughs> and I was like, damn, okay, you're going well, a bit hard in the paint. Do you remember Jay Z mixtape, uh, S. Carter collection? Yeah. Give me that beat, full. It's a full time yeah, jack. He got you know, pump it up. That's what the idea was inspired by because yeah. he did such a great job. That like, fifty had done. Mm. So you're saying I'm version yourself. Last topic: the golden ticket. Gold ticket. So, my niece's birthday came up, right? I'm ripped. Yeah. Uh, she's nine. Nine. Born on bonfire night. Bonfire night. What do you buy a nine year old? I have the idea. I'll tell you what it is. Okay. I don't know what you buy a nine year old, actually. Here's a week. Here's what I got her. Got her. Let's go away and let's take her out for her birthday. Mm -hmm. Go to cinema, go for a meal. Cool idea, but a bit crappy, isn't it? Yeah. Wacky well, warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> wacky warehouse you know the thing with wacky warehouse was growing up you wanted to go there so badly and by the time you actually got there i just thought was this it seriously Me? dude yeah you really yeah That's you what, were... because all the kids at school were going yeah but i got there like this is whack bro well no 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 wrong mum and dad took it to the wrong place it took it to a beefy that had a play area instead it wasn't quite wacky warehouse really? it was some, like budget wacky warehouse shit there we go and you took your friend from school and um not animesh um the little sing dude into primary I school. I remember. Anyway, yeah, yeah. yeah, so fine. So that's what I'm going to do. Take her out for her birthday, go see a film, go take, take her for a minute after wherever she wants to go. But it's kind of crappy. Yeah. So I went online and I found a website called The Golden Tickets. You can go on Amazon. You can write on it wherever you want. Okay. So I sent her a golden ticket. This entitles Amrit to be taken to a cinema mm -hmm. by her aunt and uncle and whatever film she wants of her choice. Yeah. And whatever meal she wants of her choice as well. And it's a golden ticket. She's got to cash it in. She was like, oh my God, I got a golden ticket. Yeah. It's something tangible. Mm. And she's like, where did you get this? It's basically a voucher. It's a voucher, yeah, yeah. right? But it's a nice ticket. It's a memory. I guess she has it and she can cash it as well. Mm. The kicker was she called and she goes, I know I want to go. I know I want to eat. Where do you want to eat? Where did she say she wants to eat? Mixed grill. Mixed girl. <laughs> She's that Asian, right? Mixed girl. Well, yeah. her dad is, I don't know, man. Her dad would be right. up for that. It wasn't mixed girl. Where does she want to go? All right. Uh, is it obvious? Too much choices. You, I, I, I didn't go. I didn't know she'd go for this one. It's not a fast food joint. No? No, it's a restaurant. Nobu? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nobu, no. Um, oh, no. Go on, tell me. Wagon Mamas. She wants to go to Wagon Mamas. She said, I want to go back to Wagon Mamas. I want to go back to Mamas. Yeah. Okay. We're like, that's random. Okay. okay. So I've got to find out a film take it to. Yeah. Take it to a film cinema. Play Wagon Mamas afterwards. Fine. Her brother's like, I want to go. Yeah. I'm like, I want to bring him, but it's her birthday present. It's up to her. Right. But then I'll feel like a dickhead if I come, get her and take her to it and, leave and he'd behind. leave him behind. But equally, you can't devalue the gift you, you gave her. No, you can't. You have to be really careful with that. The only solution I could think of is, Amrit, you can bring your brother if he does something for you. So you're cashing on the value of you having the ticket. Right. He's going to do something for her that she wants him to do. Like? I've, that's something to her to figure out with him. I have okay. some side negotiation. Yeah. And then he's got permission to come along, not just for existing, but for doing something she wanted him to do. 
that enabled him to come along as a free pass on top. That's a good idea. I want to say, invite whoever you want. But she might bring a girlfriend friend from school and he's like <laughs> doubly dissed, right? Yeah, that's yeah exactly. Mean, that's mean. So it's like, uh, I don't think she will because they get on quite well. They do, they do. But equally, like, if you had a choice to bring your best friend or your sibling, it depends on how much she pissed off. You're right. Pissed off or kid. whatever. Just Jeremy's. If it was you and our sister, I know you would never pick her, right? Why would I? There you go. See? But some kids are different with how they were brought up. So yeah, 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 yeah. They probably got on with their sibling from a young age. Growing up, Harp used to hate it. She was her, it was her birthday. Mom, aunt, grandmother used to buy her a present and me a present oh, as well. Oh, that's horrible. You can't <laughs> that's do like, that. You can't. You, you can't presents. do that, man. No wonder she fucking hates you. <laughs> 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 oh, good lord! And I bet you rubbed it in her face as well. No, I just played my toy more if you faded her toy. I bet you rubbed it. In no, her face. I didn't. I, I, see, to be, I can't be sure if I did or didn't. What I can can't be sure, sure about is she was vexed. I got a present. And I made sure I enjoyed my presence a lot. So you and rubbed I, it in. I, I, no, I just enjoyed what I had. I think, yeah, but I'm I, sure you said, oh, 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 I'm loving playing with this today. Right. Yeah, I don't know. Under, like, within I, I, I didn't have that level of spite in me. I just would, I was very much all or nothing as a kid. Yeah. I played I played hard with this. This is yeah. everything I had. She's like, that's not fair. He's got, and I'm, I'm happy. I'm cheering. I'm screaming. I'm playing. Yeah. And she's like, probably like. But it's my birthday. It's my birthday. <laughs> why, is, why is he getting shit? I'm like. She loves me. That's how it uh, is, man. That's how it is, dude. Unfortunately. And you turned up, I thought, shit. Now, my birthday, you're going to get presents for yourself as well. No, I didn't get that. No, but th- th- what you did have, though, was you had hand-me-down gifts as well. I had toys as well that you could play with at the same time. So rather than like, because we're, we're, we're the first two kids. Yeah. Presents, toys we had were our toys. There were no extra toys on top. I remember playing with like your old action figures. Right, exactly. So you had like, yeah, yeah. where I used to play, you had that as well to play with that too. That helps. And also you had toys I got because you're a boy, you could play with them as well. Oh, yeah. Mega Drive and whatever else. Like an Xbox, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, those sort of things helped you growing up as a kid. Mm. You could just join in, well, I get the cool stuff now. So like, you know, a Walkman, for example, was a big thing to get as a kid. I'm talking like a tape Walkman, right? I wanted one for ages. I got one when I was 10. Mm. Some crappy one, fine. And it didn't even have a rewind button on it. Oh, shit. So, so you just had to let it play through. No. Oh, you turn it around the other side. You yeah, play it, you got it. You got it. That, that's your rewind. Exactly right. Yeah. That's your, that's your, that's your, that sort of thing. Yeah. And the first tape I got on it was Guru <laughs> Barney, the Job Jeet Style. My dad like, here you go. <laughs> no, no, this isn't cool. Oh man, but go, those you those go, that that that's uh, that's the opening prayers of the morning for Sikhs. Yeah. So my God, my parents <laughs> trying to keep me extra religious and the thing is, like, it's your birthday, you're ten. Here's your tape, the one tape you have. And it's. When and, did you get your second tape? Well, the trouble was, the issue was, they gave me like a real tape you bought from the um, Goodwater. Yeah. And I think there's a thing on it where if you click it, you can't be recorded over. If you snap a bit of the tape, you can't record over oh, it. Oh, that's cheeky. So I couldn't dub it over either. So I was like, then I thought, also feel like going to hell if I dub it over a good, a good, you know, good money tape or something, like some religious artifact that yeah. I'd be given. So I had to sort of like. Uh, Dad had loads of spare tapes, like 90 minute ones. Of course he did. So I had to sort of like nab one of them, give it to a friend at school, friend at school, and say, look, can you give me like what you've got? One goes, yeah, yeah, yeah I'll do that. Give me that tape blank because he's a prick. Another guy gave him back an album, Shaq Demon Supplies, the album. Yeah. You're like, okay, cool. So I'm getting music off other people. Then like, oh, then you discover that you record songs off the radio. Yeah, you, you can. Yeah, attentively yeah. play, pause. Here we go. And we've got a new song coming out here. This is Fresh Prince and Boom, Shake the Room. Yeah. And he's talking over the freaking whole song and then boom, and he ends it early. You sort of pause and cut him off and everything else. And you couldn't re-edit it afterwards. You pause exactly no, the right you, time. You fuck it up and that's it. And that's it. It's, One shot. Listen to it all the time. One kill, that's it. That was it. And that's still that concept carried on still, even at university. My first year of university, Cameron came out with a song, Old Boy. Yeah. Now I went to university 2001, I think it was. Yeah. And I got that song on him. I bought mixtapes. I want to be like, it wasn't being, I'm brown. And I'm a rap fan. Mm. I've got to be not just an average rap fan. I've got to be a super. Because mm-hmm. guys like you, you're brown, you don't get the culture. No, mm. I do. I've got to be ahead of everyone else. Yeah. Like, I had to be like ahead of the game. Fuck radio. Radio is old shit. I you had that hear song. stuff that comes out that's potentially. So you must have worked through some really shitty music. I went through a lot. I used to buy a mixtape with a mixtape and figure out what was good, what looked, what sounded good. Oh, this is a dope track. In January, I think 2002 would have been, I got Cameron, oh boy, like a one and a half, two minute version. I thought this is a yeah. banger, but I had it first. Like I know I was the first guy at uni with this song. Yeah, I needed to be the first guy with this song. 
We went to go see Star Wars in cinema. I had my big speakers, I had my room thing. I put it on, put it on loop, one song repeat, mm -hmm. press play, went to cinema, Got Saturday it. night. Came back, there's a queue of guys in my block. I saw my door like, bow, for fuck's sake, turn off that fucking song. It's been playing for the last two and a bit <laughs> hours and we can't turn this shit off. Boy, 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 <laughs> oh boy, boy. And at the end of it, you could and it'll play again. Oh God. <laughs> right? You go, it had a little scratch up at the end of it and I'm like, for fuck's sake, Bow. So I'd gone to the film, come back, but I, go, but I got it first, right? I got it first, I got it first. You heard it here <laughs> first, yeah? Yeah, yeah, cool. So then the trouble was, I'm ahead of everyone, cool. I am played it, I've played it, done. I'm waiting for it to come out so I can tell everyone I got it first. I got yeah. it first. January goes, March. So January, February, March, nothing. April, nothing. May, mm, gone home now. Yeah. It came out over the fucking summer. Oh, that's unfortunate. And everyone's there like, yeah, they played a song, oh boy, my, my uni mate played that back in January. Yeah, there you I'm go. Like, yeah, but I couldn't really lord it because I wasn't there for the, bask in your glory. I wasn't there to get the whole like, this guy got it first. Yeah. So I used to do that and I used to get like songs, I used to annoy our sister all the time. Mm. Harp's got a new song for you. Yeah. Ah, oh, you can't have it. You're not ready for it yet. <laughs> you're <so> raw, <laughs> I don't know. I go, you're not ready for this. What? How am I not ready for music? You're not ready for this song. That's yet. mean. It's I too... can't lie. That is mean. Yeah, but I, was, I felt like I was just fine saying it. <laughs> I put the hours in to find what was going to be hot next. And when Usher Yeah came out, I was like, this is going to be a banger for life. It was. And it I was. Still is. bumped that out all the way. But I went through some, like, if you go on my attic right now, my mixtapes, there's so much dross on them. You realize mixtapes are piled up in such a way in the day where the first seven songs in that, you're going to get three bangers. And what you do is you look at all the mixtapes that come out and you look across all of them. What's the common songs in the first seven? Yeah. Those are going to be the bangers. Right. So After if, that, it's if, just padding. If, if Clue's got it, if k has got it, if Tony Touch has got it, if they've all got it on their mixtape, that means it's good. It's probably going to be good, right? And if it's across two mixtapes, we'll hang about. Mm. But by that time, I didn't know what payola was. People pay to be mixtapes as well sometimes. Yeah. Right? Didn't know that happened then. But in those days, though, the market was such a way that because you went to a mixtape vendor, you'd always want to choose from, you had to make sure you packed your mixtape with heat. Mm. It couldn't just be shit songs and fillers because, well, the last clue one I got was shit. Yeah. No more. That's K Slay one got with shit. No more. No. So K Slay and Clue had to keep making sure they were doing it back and forth. Mm. They hated each other. So now it's just a whole different world where it's everyone's just finding the latest song through Spotify. Which is, which is a blessing. It's a blessing, but also you're at the whim of other people. So say if and one the DJ algorithm. doesn't like you. And the you, algorithm. Yeah, if one DJ doesn't like you, you can go to others. Like you have options. But if you're cancelled on Spotify, you're cancelled completely. Your your outlets of your biggest outlet is gone. You're like, okay, shit. Now what? Apple Music. Yeah, or maybe maybe it doesn't get on Apple Music. Maybe you can only put it on Spotify. I'm just playing devil's advocate. Sure. Right. Well, random thing here, and I was digging through music as I always do. There was a I follow up Twitter and stuff. There was a Kanye West mixtape called The Graduate that came yeah. out. I'd heard it back in the day. I never owned a copy, so I found it online. Downloaded it to my phone. Great, I've got it. I haven't got Apple. I've got Android. Mm. There is no really good native MP3 player that plays a whole album, a player song. She loaded it through File Explorer. Here's a song. Bam, press it. Yeah, cool. One song plays. It won't load the next oh, song. Oh, it doesn't carry on through. No, it hasn't loaded the album up. So you can do it with Apple, but you have to do it through desktop. You can't do it through mobile. Which is a shame, right? You have to download it onto your desktop, put it on your iTunes, then it syncs up to your Apple Music. That's that how it sucks works. sucks balls. YouTube music player is fucking underrated. It really is. I don't pay for the premium. Well, here's the thing I didn't pay for either. And then Jay, my mate has it, and he's there going to be bad. It's better than Spotify. Goes, yeah, right. He goes, I think about it, right? I've got all songs on Spotify. Go, but the quality must be shit. He goes, that's no, really decent. But the mixtapes that I listened to growing up are not oh, officially on released YouTube, in. Yeah. And the YouTube had done MP3s of them as well. So you can right. play them as MP3s. And I'm like, yo. That mixtape I had, the Jay-Z mixtape down there, that Coldplay Jay-Z mixtape, which was yeah, epic, yeah. Viva La Hova, that's on there. I was like, mm. yo, all my old mix, all those bangers that they never released are being, I can get them now. That's why I pay for Apple Music on my phone on purpose because my, my old history of Apple Music from yeah. like the music library you gave me in the, two, in the early 2000s, yeah. it's still on there. Well, so if I have a nostalgia feeling song, yeah. I might just look on my Apple library and I find it and I'm like, oh shit, I'm the only one in the, I'm the only person that owns this song because no one else can get it online. Well, the other one also was uh, Amazon had a bit of a head start because I bought a lot of albums via Amazon. 
Yeah. When Amazon Music came out, they backtracked all the albums I bought physically mm. and loaded it to my Amazon list. Smart idea. Which is smart of them. I already paid for it, right? Mm. So I wasn't going to pay twice for it, was I? Mm. It's like, oh shit. So I started Amazon Music Player How as well. music still about? I don't know. I'm going to have a look. I'll have a look on it, I don't right? I think it is. But it's kind of cool. Like, oh, my album. oh, I bought that album. Oh, it's on there. Oh, yeah. oh, nice. I bought a lot of albums. Like, first it was play.com. Yeah. Bought it from place online. It was, no, it was a website called play.com. Mm. DVDs and um, CDs. And then it was like Amazon. Mad how the world's changed, man, with all this stuff now. MP3 to streaming. Uh, Mum went to yesterday and said, Mum, what, what's streaming? Oh. It's just like, okay, well, Mum, when you watch a film, you're streaming it. Yeah. The idea is you're not downloading it first and then watching it. You can just play you're it live. Live streaming it. So it's coming down streamed onto your TV directly. I think the best way I would have said to Mum is, you know, on YouTube, when you watch a video, yeah. that's streaming. But it's just you're watching a video live as you press play straight away. It yeah. doesn't have to go to a physical device. Yeah, it doesn't have to It's go hosted yeah. for you and you can yeah. just press play. That's yeah. it. Yeah, it's watching that. That's, good. that's, good. that's probably it. the simplest yeah. way. I was about to go into the whole cloud and then this. And Don't overwhelm yeah, yeah, so I, 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 I know, I know. You're, like, you're I know, speaking know, like know. nuclear physics to me. And it's not but it, it's like you used to watch um, IT crowd. Yeah. What is the, the internet? internet? Do not break this. This is the internet. Yeah. Do not type Google into Google. Google you'll crash, because the, you'll crash the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a great thing to say. Man. I see. Fantastic. It's smart. <laughs> <laughs> plenty, of people, plenty of people will still believe that today. I think we need to call it. Huh? That's fine. All right, cool. We'll call it here. Peace. See you soon. Take care, guys.